Okay. Okay, welcome everyone and welcome to Mega Life 21 Live Progressive Podcast. Um, this is part two of our show with our very special guest, Sash Boyle. He is, uh, hello Sash, and, and from, <laughs> from San Diego, California. How are you doing there in, in the drought stricken uh, San Diego? Uh, surviving, James. Thank you very much. All right. At least San Diego has a desalinization program going on, which is good. Uh, yeah, big, big plant coming up online in uh, January ne next year. Well, this is part two of having uh, Sash Boyle as a guest. He is my administrator, uh, number one administrator on uh, the Facebook group Uncensored Hard Hitting Truth, which is attached to my um, Facebook page, Newsletter Censored, which is also attached to the weekly show I do with the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman, Uncensored Hard Hitting Truth, as seen on the web. Actually, my other show, the first time I met with Sash Boyle, is seen on the web too, so you can check it out. Um, this second meeting with you, this is the East-West Connection here, <laughs> very similar to uh, Adrian Adonis and Jesse the Body Ventura. Uh, right. Sash Boyle um, and I uh, were on the same page. And um, when I say that is we don't just post things and comment just to stick our two cents in and, uh, and, and, and just to, to kill time being online. We have an agenda. And people don't realize it that this class war and holy war, whatever you want to call spiritual, not holy war, spiritual and class warfare, happens to be very real, whether or not you're a Christian that actually follows what's in the Bible, not like counterfeit Christian right-wing fundamentalist zealots, which know nothing about what's inside the Bible. Whether you follow it or not, whether you believe we're in the end times or not, things are pretty bad. And uh, not just with climate change, and uh, global warming, which happens to be very real, uh, if you talk to scientists that know what they're talking about, and not right-wing propaganda. Not only that, but politically, we are now living, unfortunately, in a uh, fascist corporate oligarch. Uh, uh, the, the combining of the corporation with government is the definition of fascism. Many of you stupid teabaggers out there do not know your political definitions. They throw uh, common, communism with socialism, with a with, uh, 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 dictator, military dictatorship, where, you know, they throw all kinds of um, neg negative, well, they demonize it. Actually, communism and socialism uncorrupted the way it originally was written from Karl Marx was not a bad thing. What happened is the politicians of, let's say, the Soviet Union, they took it and they turned it into a totalitarian type military dictatorship and they demonized it. Socialism is what they practice in Northern Europe, Scandinavia, and, 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 it, and so far it happens to be the most fair form of government. I guess they, they, they have a sort of hybrid of, um, I guess, socialism and capitalism, but you, the rich, pay their fair share in taxes, um, education and health care are rights, not privileges, which they should be, and the rich pay for it. You can't be yeah. more fair than that. No, absolutely, and uh, when you talk about how money is being spent in politics, it's now at the point where it's unabated. Stephen Colbert had an interesting meme that said, uh, good job on gay people getting equal rights. They're, they're five years behind corporations. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
since corporations uh, have free speech now, according to the Supreme Court, uh, they can uh, use that money and uh, as free speech and violate any politics they want anyway. Well, Dr. Bill told me that the whole crazy idea of a corporation being a person was originally just a, like a letterhead. Uh, like, it, it wasn't even technically like a law. So, I mean, he would have to explain it more in detail when I see him Saturday. Actually, yeah. I'll see him tomorrow. He'll explain it to me then. But uh, yeah. it's not a real bona fide law or amendment or anything like that, that corporations are people, which is absurd. Uh, see, see, folks, this is why I'm titling this show Enough is Enough, because the normal people out there in the United States... All right, Dave, they're pushed over the edge practically. They're scraping the bottom of the barrel. I'm talking about the normal people that do not vote Republican. Normal people. Unfortunately, these normal people that have hit rock bottom, unfortunately, these are the people that had voter apathy this past November 4th 2014 and did not bother to vote. And this is the problem we have now. You, how much longer do you want to suffer? You want to, you want, you want to uh, go on for the rest of your life like this? I mean, uh, forget about those morons in, in the poor sections of the red states in the south. Like yeah. the, mor the morons in Kentucky that are living in the trailer park and they're... Uh, and they're, they're poor and destitute, and they vote for Mitch McConnell because of their crazy cult re religion. I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about the normal people with intelligence that are suffering and struggling every day, every week, living paycheck to paycheck or uh, social service check, you know. Um, and, 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 they, and they just don't think it's important for them to show up and vote. And this is the problem because if you all you all think like that, then right, right. And one of the links that um, we're going to post you know, at the end of our video basically is Noam Chomsky saying something similar that we've got this ridiculous situation where the approval rating of Congress is at an all-time low, yet they keep getting voted back in at an all-time high, and. We, yeah. you know, so not only we hate these people, yet we let them walk right back in to keep their job. I mean, where else in the country can you have a job like that? You know? <laughs> right. Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. I mean, what does that say about us as a people? You know? Uh -huh. It means that we're, we're too apathetic, even when even when we're all in agreement that, that you know, things need to change. I uh, know yeah. other recent statistics and surveys show that you know, 80 to 90 percent of the American people, and both parties, everybody, don't like crony capitalism, more money out of politics. Um, yeah, there, are, there, are, there are groups doing things about it, but for the most part, people feel as if nothing can be done. They have apathy. They feel as if, you know, uh, they feel despondent, as if, you know, the man is in charge, the man is bought out of the government, and uh, there's nothing I can do about it. You know? Um, and that's a tough place to be. And I think, you know, those forces that do that want us to feel that way. They want us to feel powerless. You know, so we don't do anything to change it. Yeah? Yeah. Well, um, hopefully, and I have a feeling more people are getting their news from the Internet and not from the mainstream media, which are lying to you which are corporate control, uh, and uh, if, you, if you're online quite a bit, you will see that Bernie Sanders has quite a momentum going, and he's very close to breathing down Hillary Clinton's neck. So Bernie Sanders is having no problems raising the money for this campaign. I'm not even going to mention the idiot's you know, in the Republican clown bus. You know, <laughs> right. I mean, people tell me, uh, hey, guess who officially made his announcement? Chris Christie. He says, I thought he made his announcement already. Or whether it be Donald Trump. I, I, 
what they, how they think, what they say is, uh, is, is based on a, 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 the ultimate in selfishness, narcissism, greed. It's all about the get way of life, not the give way of life. Right. It, it, uh, they have no compassion or empathy for anyone else. As long as they have theirs, that's all they care about. So I'm not going to focus on them. My main focus are the decent people out there, which make up the majority, that know what's going on and um, choose not to vote. That's what we have to get behind. We have to get rid of this apathy. Yeah, people need to understand that the way Americans have their revolutions now is with the voting process. Uh, you know, we're supposed to stand together and do what's right for us all when this disenfranch uh, disenfranchisement ha happens. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, yeah. the, uh, the the whole point of voter turnout is to make sure that you know the policy of the public overweighs the, the policy of corporations, you know, or greedy people or greedy politicians. Um, it used to be that way, uh, and you know we, we definitely need to understand that uh, the only way these things get changed, and they change can change quickly. You've got people just you know standing up and saying this is wrong, you know, this needs to change. Yeah, yeah, people. Uh uh, uh, people showing up um, for uh, Bernie Sanders public appearances are uh, like standing room only, overflowing, and, and more than he expected. So, and, and he's also raising more money, supposedly, and getting more people showing up than all the Republican candidates put together. And he's supposed to be the socialist. So well, he's, he's a populist. I mean, a populist. I'm sorry. A, po a populist. For those of you that are unaware with the term, a populist, from what I was told, was the original progressive liberal, not the corporatist Democrat, but the original progressive liberal that uh, was behind the little guy. Uh, I guess somebody. Similar to, I guess, an FDR who uh, started, I think, all the regulations or, or in, uh, reinforce the corporate regulations. You right. know, you know Anymore, yeah. I mean, you need yeah, regulations. Exactly. Yeah, because you, you need regulations because without regulations, the demons are not defanged. And th this was the purpose of it. You know, but there's no populace in the Democratic Party anymore, and the only reason why Bernie Sanders is running as a Democrat is so he can get the face time that he needs. Otherwise, well, he wouldn't get it. Yeah, well, let's segue into where that pack money goes as far as the media is concerned. You know, we're always wondering how come these whack jobs are given the mouthpiece to be on the media. Well, the, the packs it's all about the packs The PACs give the media tons of money, so much good money they can't turn it away, so they give you know, they give these whack jobs money, uh, you know, take their money, and they let them go on and say their BS, uh, mislead people, and drive them into a frenzy. Um, if You've probably seen me post opensecrets.org links a lot. I recommend anyone and everyone always go there. Uh, to always find out what a politician is really up to, because you can see their donors on that site. And once you see their donors, that kind of explains why, you know, they're saying what they're saying. Mm -hmm. um, it's pretty transparent. Uh, so, OpenSecrets.org, definitely check it out. I guess, uh, I, I guess, you know, the, yeah. go ahead, James. No, I guess this is why the local New Jersey cable station, Channel 12, News 12 New Jersey, every time they speak about Chris Christie, they do it with a, a, big, a big smile. They, they, they don't criticize him. They don't debate him. They don't rebuttal. You know, they, they kiss his ass, his, mm -hmm. his rather ample ass, too. You know, <laughs> and, 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 and they... And they don't say a single discouraging word about the man. And the same thing goes for the for the uh, major networks. They're not saying anything about any any of the Republicans or the insane zealot uh, right wing evangelists and pastors. Not a word. Uh, and right. they don't give FaceTime on the on the mainstream media to an Elizabeth Warren or a Bernie Sanders, even though Bernie is getting some attention in oh, yeah. interviews. I mean, he, yeah. he was on Bill Maher a couple weeks back and 
he's done even more and more. It's been, I think those on the left that kind of are sick of the corporatist dynasties uh, want to see a good progressive. And we feel as if the pendulum has, so, has, swung, has gone so far in one direction, it needs to swing back now to the other direction. That's just yeah. that's how it's worked in our country. Um, same similar thing happened 100 years ago, you know, when the you know Standard Oil was buying out politicians and you know, and uh, children were working in factories, and women didn't have the right to vote. You know, there was a lot of strong progressive social upheaval. You know, and there was FDR and the New Deal. Yeah. Well, that's why the union was uh, the first union was created uh, out of the uh, the evils and greed of the Industrial Revolution. You know, you had your uh, Rockefeller and your J.P. Morgan and scumbags like that, who incidentally, those are the two men that uh, Thomas Edison sold out to, and not uh, 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 Nikola Tesla. They went with Thomas Edison because Thomas Edison thought it was a great idea to sell electricity to the public, where Nikola Tesla, you know, uh, what was it, um, 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 alternate current? with Tesla and direct current with Edison, he said this electricity is all around us, in the ground, everywhere. There's no need to charge people for it. But Edison, the scumbag Edison that we were told was such a great, wonderful man in our history books, went with Rockefeller and uh, J.P. Morgan. And, uh, and well, there was a reason why the union was invented. They had to. I mean, you had no rights. You were... You were close to, uh, I guess, slave labor, if, you, if they had their way. Well, I think the, the technology revolution has kind of just show, shown a lot of like where the, the industrial revolution failed. You know, in the industrial revolution, it was all about competition and you know, knocking off the competition. And there is similar to that in the technology world, but the technology world fosters a lot more collaboration. Uh, and so the companies that are rising to the top now are the ones that have the Smartest collaborators, you know, but you definitely don't see those people in our government. Those, you know, the, the, the people in our government right now are pay, are officials. You know, they're they're pay, they're paid very well by their donors to uh, follow the policies. You know that the donors say they want, and uh, to heck with what uh, we want. <laughs> That's what Citizen uh, United is is all about: is keeping the money and the corruption in politics. You know, and, and uh, yeah, and the Koch brothers spend more and more money every every time. You know, um, I just I always think the Red Wing has no argument when because the Koch brothers are literally spending like a quarter of a million to you know, a million dollars more every single election. Yeah. You know, I mean, you can't argue against that. Obviously, they're trying to buy a politician. Yeah, well, Mitch money. McConnell, uh, uh, the turtle, ugly old turtle face, he admitted that the Koch brothers owned and controlled the Republican Party. It slipped out, and I, I, I always figured that. I mean, once somebody does you a big favor, you owe that person a big favor in return. And uh, if they're funding your campaign and you get elected, well, now you have to return the favor. And they're uh, thus, uh, this is why they, I call them corporate whores. Now, I was reprimanded one time. Um, by Gary Null, Mr. Ga Dr. Gary Null, for using the word whore, corporate whore, because I had called uh, Oprah Winfrey. This was, this was before I found out Hillary, Hillary Clinton was uh, in bed with Monsanto. Uh, you know, Hil uh, uh, Oprah Winfrey was promoting uh, organic farming and organic foods. Then all of a sudden I hear she's a Monsanto uh, lady. She's behind Monsanto. Well, that, that's very contradictory. So, I I made the statement. I and I called her a corporate whore. You know. So Gary says, you know, James, you should, you know, you got to raise the bar on on your the things you say. You know, show some class. I says, well, if somebody is every if look, unfortunately, I hate to say it, but. Everybody more or less has a price. Now, if Oprah Winfrey or Hillary Clinton or whoever or any any, any Democrat uh, gets that price and they're willing to sell out their voters and they're willing to sell out what they believe in and who they are, then that is a prostitute. 
<laughs> That's a whore. You're, 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 you're. Well, yeah, yeah, and and it and it continues. You know, the the I think Ferguson shows that uh, you know a lot of those people were being driven into poverty by these ridiculous tickets and these quotas because the rich people, the one percent, the people like the Cokes, didn't want their taxes uh, raised. You know, um, and, and give people you know sort of a break. Um, and, uh, and that's all because of the politicians are paying off, you know, uh, and it happens everywhere. It happens here in San Diego, you know, in California. I mean, it's just yeah. we're supposedly a liberal state, but, you know, there's still big money in politics. Hey, Jerry Brown, uh, the, the, the moonbeam Jerry Brown sure allowed, uh, the scumbag, uh, John Brayback of Nestle's to continue to bottle California fresh water. Yeah. He didn't stop him from doing that, it would have, and the fracking. So yeah. you know, um, we, de we definitely need public money only campaigns. Uh, I, I think yeah. I think I think majority of Americans want that. So the question is, how do we, how do the eighty, 80 to ninety percent of Americans that want that get that? <laughs> you know, despite the fact that the politicians we hired to, to change things just like we want. Yeah. You know, to, yeah. Um, <clears throat> hey, even the uh, the wealthiest man in the world, the uh, uh, this the slithering um, uh, Monsanto boy, Bill Gates, the man that owns 500,000 shares of Monsanto, even he admitted that when taxes on the rich are high, prosperity booms in the United States. And, and, and that's very true. The more, look, the more money you put in the pockets of the little guy who is the true consumer, the, the better the economy will be. Because the the rich are not the true consumer. I mean, how many yachts and private jets can you possibly buy? I mean, uh, uh, since they make up a small percentage, so the little guy is the true consumer and the backbone. And yeah. uh, what, what we what we really should strive for is like we what we had in the old days: emphasize Main Street and 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 lo and local organic farming. Local organic farming, the, the, the small farmer, excuse me, and Main Street, small businesses, which are the middle class, not just mom and pop stores, but small growth companies. And if, if, a, if a big company, if a big blue chip company decides to be greedy and sleazy and they go belly up, no, no, they don't get any subsidies. They go belly up. Bye-bye. Uh, and there's always there's always an emerging uh, competitor that will take their place. There's always another emerging growth corporation that will take their place and learn from their mistakes and be different. So that that's what it's supposed to be about. I mean, it's supposed to be, yeah. You know, not not corporate welfare. Oh, but that's fine. Corporate welfare is it, it, not stealing to Republicans, but. Uh, helping the the poor is stealing to Republicans. And you know the thing is too, the politicians. If you get them in a candid uh, interview, they'll tell you they hate it. I mean, they're they're basically telemarketers now. They spend uh, a good portion of their time, you know, fifty percent of their time, calling around constituents, begging for money, hustling, um, and uh, that's. I mean, as a taxpayer, that kind of, that kind of takes me off because I mean, is it like Half their time, they're working on policy. The other half, they're, they're begging for money. You know, um, because the system is the way. It is. Well, Reagan changed that 30 years ago. You know, shifting the tax burden to the middle class and the poor. Well, the poor will be consumption taxes. You know, sales tax. But the middle class are being strangled with the property taxes and income taxes, and and, and small companies, Main Street, is the middle class. And, 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 of course, since Reagan, the rich have been on a tax vacation. Bernie Sanders yeah. wants to change that. They, 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 have, uh, they don't have that in Scandinavia, including Iceland. It's, they, they set the example for the world as how the, the most perfect, most perfect, I didn't say perfect, and most fair government is. Now, um, the rest of the show... I want you to guide it because I know you have topics, but before the last thing I will say in a speech-like manner 
<laughs> in, or tirade is the subject of gerrymandering, which seems to be a formidable weapon by Republicans. Correct. Yeah. Take it away. Well, uh, we actually, I've actually, as we've been talking about things, the things you've mentioned have kind of lined up with uh, some of my uh, talking points. Um, we've already we've actually covered quite a bit of it already, but you did bring up a point about uh, people, voters, kind of being fooled by this whole process. And it happens. You know, the blue collar voters are often fooled into voting for supporting a party that is kind of screwing them over the most and trying to take the most away from them. Uh, the other day, I posted a link to uh, the donors for Mike Huckabee, and I was alarmed to see that we got a lot of donations from, like, three branches of our military, you know? Uh -huh. And I was just thinking, you know, this guy would just turn around. He got into office and turn around and send you guys into, you know, apocalyptic wars, and you're going to give them, you know, your money, you know, to, to run for office, you know? Um, I don't know. That's just my opinion. But to me, it just seems like these poor soldiers are just being, you know, you know, either not educated or, or they're, they're thinking this guy in the right wing is gonna gonna make sense. But how could be? He's no war hero. He's not gonna um, look out for their 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 good, uh, you know, their, their lives and, and what have you. But uh, anyway, I mean, that, the money in politics, politics is the biggest problem with, with you know broadcasters that lie the most, you know, or mislead the most, um, and they're usually supported by the packs, and they're usually on cable news. Uh, you know, well, we know who they are. <laughs> yeah. well, well, I mean, um, I, I hear the word gerrymandering uh, being used in a sentence uh, concerning districts, yeah. voting districts. Uh, uh, um, it, it's, it's, it's an unfair practice by Republicans, and uh, what it spells out is, is just flat out cheating. They know they can't win on facts, mm -hmm. statistics. Having a good, positive, solid record. They can't win on that. So they have to win on sabotaging, underhanded, ta <coughs> underhanded tactics, political corruption, and uh, things of that nature. Right. Uh, and, you know, gerrymandering, though it's been done by both parties, the right wing has really perfected it to the point where they've completely invalidated, um, basically they redraw certain districts that could work against them uh, in the election, uh, and they split them to dilute them so they're not as powerful, um, or they divide them um, so they won't have that much of an impact upon them, you know, uh, in the next election cycle. Um, it, it's one of those things where I think at one point it was illegal and then it was made legal again by, you know, the situation we have now. So hopefully something can happen soon or, that, you know, um, that can change. Because I think that's, you know, money in politics, gerrymandering, if that goes away, then we actually have a chance of actually getting some strong progressive change for everyone, you know, in this country. You know, and uh, not just people on the left, but people, people in, on all sides of the aisle, you know. Yeah, and, uh, exactly. um, um, well, I like that banner I read the other day. Uh, they said if um, if a hundred percent of Americans voted at, at every major election, the Republicans would never get elected to anything because because the majority of the population uh, wants a progressive uh, government, a progressive right. system, because they know. The progressives will not only will not just give the mainstream, uh, the masses, a few crumbs or a handful of crumbs, but with a hundred percent progressive-run government, they'll get a whole loaf of bread, and and with a Republican, they'll get absolutely nothing, and uh, unless you're rich, of course, hmm. you know. Um, no, I think, and that leads back to your point of. You know, say people actually got paid, you know, a, a working wage, then they could afford more, so more money to go in the economy. So the guy who's like pizza joint is going to go out of business because he can only sell slices of pizza. All of a sudden, you can start selling full pizza pies and sell them to go. And, you know, because more people are earning 15 bucks an hour, so more people can spend money, you know, and his, and his business doesn't go out of business, you know. Um, right. And you can make that case for any kind of restaurant, but I guess the 
I mean, it's just common sense to understand that, uh, you know, more money for all of us is more success for all of us. You know, it'll burgeon the economy for all of us, not just the people at the top. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, um, it's the only way to, to do it is to, um, you can't, look, uh, capitalism has statistically failed for the little guy. Uh, I mean, I'm talking about like uh, the pure capitalism that the conservatives want where you have to pay out of pocket for everything and, and you have a, a very, very tiny shrunken government, except for the military, of course. They love that. Military, <laughs> military waste. Uh, it has failed for the middle class and the poor. And uh, from what um, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman explained to me is since 1776, only 10 percent of, of America has ever elevated their financial status in life. Well, is that what they call upward mobility? Yeah. Self, uh, a self-made, uh, um, raising your standard of living or your financial position in life. Only 10% have ever, ever done that. And um, the ones that brag about being self-made and pulling themselves up by the bootstraps, <clears throat> I got news for you, man. That doesn't happen in this system without breaks, without people giving you breaks. Uh, you know, I, I mean, aside from the people born with a silver spoon in their mouth, I'm talking about people that that go around arrogantly bragging that I'm a self-made person. Now, you got breaks. There were there were certain key people that gave you big breaks. Otherwise, you would never. There is no rags to riches in this system. Yeah. yeah, everybody plays the hand they're dealt, you know, and, and yeah. sometimes they get a good hand, and sometimes they got to play a lot to get a good hand. <laughs> yeah. um, but anyway, get, getting back to the Koch brothers, um, uh, Chomsky says they're equivalent of the Ayatollahs now. Because, you know, in, in uh, Iran, if you want to be the president of Iran, you have to be approved by the inner circle of the Ayatollahs, you know. So it's like a monarchy. Yeah. Yeah, well, oligarch yeah, basically, um, and you got this group of, group of, I guess a theocracy would be, would be where they are, you the religion controls, right? But uh, basically, they have to approve the candidates, and a similar thing was happening in, in Hong Kong, where they were having these riots, because all the people they wanted to run the government there, um, well, they had to have approval by the inner circle of, uh, you know, of mainland China. And you know they they didn't want to have that either. So I mean we're, we're encountering a similar thing. You mentioned Chris Christie, you know back when he was in the running, he remember he he flew way out of the hell in the Palm Desert or whatever to have a meeting with the Cokes to beg for their money and put on a better presentation than I'm sure all the other clown car candidates that went out there too. Yeah, and after four yeah. years of New Jerseyans complaining about yeah. Chris Christie constantly, they go and reelect him. Uh, uh, didn't they do that in, in, in Wisconsin with Scott Walker? Didn't they reelect him? And and, and, yeah. and and it's a big union state, right, Wisconsin? Well, he's he's a he's a union buster. Uh, he's proud of it. Yeah. I mean, it's and, isn't it blue collar? A blue Wisconsin is supposed to be traditionally a blue state, blue collar union people. You know what I mean? How the hell did he slither his way into getting reelected? Well, it's, it's, they, it, I think it's a it's a hydra, you know. Gerrymandering, as you mentioned, is a part of it, you know. I think, you know, union busting is another part of it. Disenfranchising certain socioeconomic demographics of people, certain cultural demographics of people, uh, take, taking away voting rights, making it harder for people to vote. Uh, all this stuff, you know, doesn't just happen magically. People at the top are pushing, you know, spending a lot of money so the politicians make it harder. For the rest of us to make sure that uh, you can get out there and feel it. You know, well, how, does he, yeah, how does the union get busted if, if they don't want to get busted? If they won't, you know, I mean, how do, how do you bust a union? Um, I, I just don't understand that. I mean, I, I think progressives and uh, unions should get more militant. Uh, 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 I was so thrilled when somebody try to shoot down the Confederate flag in uh, the South Carolina State House. 
I'm going, you know, right on. I mean, a, a progressive getting militant, you know, uh, uh, giving them a dose of their own medicine. So I don't yeah. know. Union busting. The young young woman climbed up there and did it peacefully, and uh, and she got arrested. But I don't think she was peaceful. In they but. should somebody some progressive should with a pair of balls should get a Barrett fifty caliber sniper rifle and just 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 not just bust that flagpole. I, I you know you know sometimes you can't you see you can't negotiate with evil. You just can't. They, yeah. they, people, you know, all this uh, crap for years when uh, Nancy Pelosi was, uh, oh, she Speaker of the House? No. Speaker of the House at one time? You know, everything was bipartisanship this, bipartisanship that, compromise. That's like a, that's a liberal's wet dream. I mean, it's not going to happen. They're not going to compromise with, with, uh, with good people because there is no compromise with the right wing. It's their way or the highway. They, they have no yeah. interest in compromising. And I, my experience is it's definitely that way at the national level. Um, it's getting that way less and less at the state level. Uh, you know, any, any percent, 80 to 90 percent of all Americans want crony capitalism to go away. I just think that people feel helpless, impotent, caught in the Kafka-esque bureaucracy right. machine that has so much money behind it, uh, you know, the power is concentrated in conglomerates, and they're accountable to the public, you know, kind of like the TPP, you know, and uh, it, it makes us all feel helpless, like we have no control over it. Yeah, well, plus there's a lot of rights. Yeah, go ahead, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Uh, I mean, um, I, I want to, basically, they have, they have personhood now, and their rights even go way beyond personhood, you know, you know and, you know, the... We mentioned the TPP, you know, there are deficit dangers with kind of forcing ourselves into alliance with love and other com countries. I mean, the only way we can get out of the TPP is if they all agree to let us out of the TPP. Um, you know, uh, we're constantly being distracted by one thing or another, you know, Bristol Palin, Sarah Palin, <laughs> you know, uh, the Confederate flag. Uh, oh, so, yeah. Yeah, well, they're, I mean, they're, they're entertaining. Look, as long as the lunatics and uh, Noam Skulls are, are in the Republican Party, that's all I care about. Um, and there's many, many of them. You know, we can go on and on and make jokes about every one of them. Um, uh, unfortunately, what's, what's very saddening and despicable is the amount of Democrats that have sold out their voters and sold out the American people by uh, going with corporations and, you know, the fat cats, whatever you want to call them, 1%, the Koch brothers, going with fast track uh, um, and uh, going with, like, Monsanto and things of that nature. It's, it's, uh, the Democrats have proven to the conspiracy theorists um, I guess you would call them libertarians, even though libertarians vary. You have um, liberal, left-wing libertarian like Jesse Ventura, and then you have right-wing libertarians like the, I guess, Ron Paul, right? Pretty much, or uh, uh, Lyndon LaRouche, or uh, uh, that other kook. You know, I mean, they vary. Uh, yeah. They vary, but uh, libertarians, uh, I mean... Conspiracy theorists say it doesn't matter who you vote for because they're they're both two sides of the same coin. Republicans, Democrats, they're both in bed with the one percent, which I believe is true. Even though you will get a few crumbs with a Democrat, you will get a few crumbs or a handful of crumbs. You'll get right. nothing from a Republican. But like Jesse Ventura also said, I'm sick and tired of always settling for the lesser of the two evils. That's true. That's true. And, you know, again, you go to Open Secrets and you look at Jeb Bush, you know, his donors, and you look at Hillary and her donors, you'll see that a lot of them are the same donors, and especially the ones on Wall Street. Right. Why is that? Well, they're hedging their bets, you know, and uh, they're the kind of position where they can afford to do that. You know, so either way, they win, the way hey. things are set up, hey. unless we decide to change that. One, one of uh, Jesse Ventura's people 
Uh, I've said this before. They, they, uh, Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama were caught going attending a Bilderberg meeting. What the hell was that all about? You know. Uh, yeah, so. I, I think we don't want dynasties anymore. We want people like Bernie that are ready to come in and, and, and just start helping the American people and, 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 and end the whole hurting of the American people. This, this, this awful history we have of abusing one another, going back to the foundation of our country. It needs to stop. We need to collaborate now. We need to actually be not just the better country, but the better human beings of the world, and, you know, and walk that walk, you know, and not let yeah. these countries, these, in, like in, you know, Scandinavia or any pass us by. Um, we can be, you know, social progressives without being socialists or communists, you know. Yeah, it shouldn't be about party. Um, it shouldn't, be, a, shouldn't yeah. be about party loyalty. It should be about, like you say, just a, this way of thinking. That benefits everyone. I call it social responsibility, even though that's tied more to corporations. I like to think of it as sort of like we all have a social responsibility to make sure that you know that you know we as a people, country, you know, world live, thrive, and survive, and carry on to the next generation, and so forth. Um, you know, and obviously we're dropping the ball. Climate change would be a whole other show. Well, the concept, um, the concept of the rich paying most of the taxes, is not. Um, really that bad of, of a concept because it, 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 it's part of the original tax system of this country, the progressive tax system, where the more money you make, the more taxes you pay. And if you don't want to pay so many, so much uh, in taxes that don't make so much money. Right. If you're, right. If you're it's your, it's your social responsibility as a successful American mm -hmm. to share that wealth with the rest of your Americans. So... Um, you know, we all have things that keep us all alive, like roads and electricity right. and clean water and, and, you know, that, and jobs and that kind of thing. You, you, um, you need big government. You need big government for certain things, like you said, infrastructure, roads, uh, uh, certain services that can only be done by government. You know, yeah. services I, that, could do, could, that do it well that you could trust. You're right. certain you cannot eliminate and shrink government down to nothing because privatization has, in the long run, has never worked. It's, it's always been a fiasco. Right. 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 I, mean, I, think that's, I think that's one of the reasons why you mentioned our military budget is now like 50% of our entire budget because, you know, it's, it's never been audited. It's full of contractors that are making way too much money. And, uh, the, the poll even recently came out and said, if you're, you're a military contractor and you're dealing in weapons of death, don't call yourself a Christian anymore. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. if you're not, and if you don't want to, if you have no compassion or empathy, you don't want to take care of the veterans coming back. Also, don't call yourself a Christian. Hey, the money they they waste on weapons that will never be used. Mm -hmm. Okay, that could probably eradicate homelessness in the United States and and pay and pay for food stamps for everyone that is qualified for it and you know, doubt. and money Without left it. over money left over yeah, you, know, I, just, I agree. you know just take one just take one plane just take one plane that will never be used you could you could take yeah. care of a lot of poor people in the United States with that money you know, but it gets back to what I said at the beginning, the me, 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 uh, 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 self-serving greed, uh, uh, the get way of life. I have mine and I don't care about you. And you got that cunt, Joni Ernst, you know, uh, accusing poor people of stealing when they collect social services and, and food stamps, which is like one or two percent of the entire United States budget. Calling them, uh, 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 calling them, them, them cheats or whatever they call them, lazy cheats. Uh, uh, they're stealing the taxpayers' money. Meanwhile, uh, uh, Republicans just giving away billions of dollars a year in corporate subsidies. Uh, that's not stealing, and, um, and 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 of course the waste in the military. That's not stealing. Uh, um, and Republicans not even putting in part-time hours. I wouldn't even consider their hours part-time. And, and they're getting all these perks, and they're getting the best of everything. 
first of all, if you're making 175,000 years plus, you can afford to pay for your own damn health insurance and retirement account. They're, they're public servants. You want 175,000 plus? You know what? You're going to pay for your own health insurance, health care, and you're going to put away for your own retirement nest egg. You know, it's ridiculous. I mean, uh, uh, my brother-in-law is in a business, a family-owned business. He has a mediocre health insurance plan. Not bad, not the best. He pays 500 a month. You mean to tell me uh, that a congressman or a senator or a governor making 175000 can't pay for a better plan than what he pays for? Uh -huh. Can't afford to do that? But nobody's held accountable, accountable Sash, in, in this country. Nobody's right. holding the politicians' feet to the fire. No one's held well, accountable. The um, <clears throat> Young Turks have established a pack called Wolf com, and they've used it to go into several states to get a lot of local state representatives to back overturning Citizens United. Uh, the, their whole their whole hope is to actually create a constitutional Congress, which can then overrule Citizens United. And uh, they keep having good successes and good wins because they actually are sending people into these towns, you know, and getting people to do good old fashioned phone calling and yeah. And, and lobbying and and the way it was done 100 years ago to make change they're doing it and uh so you know it's it's hap it's happening on a state-by-state -state level and, and it, it only happens because people decide to work together to create some change you know however it can, they can be done they're going to do it is it a and funny it? yeah that no that's it that's it that's my point is it, a, is it funny how republicans give these positive sounding titles to these very negative uh uh, uh Programs like Citizens United it sounds positive, but it's not. It, it right. means political corruption, money in politics. Okay, uh, uh, the Clean Airs, whatever they call it, the Clean Air Act, or the Clean, the Clean. No, I'm sorry, the Clean Skies Amendment. Yeah. I think it's called Cl the Clear, clear, clear Skies. Yeah. Clear Skies. I'm sorry, the Clear Skies Amendment sounds positive. It means the opposite. It, it means the opposite. So they're trying to. Um, they're snake oil salesmen with the American people. They're trying to. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. We're. Oh yeah. Cl clear sky. So you know, it's snake oil. It's deception, and uh, for people, isn't it funny how progressives like us we could see through all the bullshit, where the average folk, they're so brainwashed to believe everything they were taught, everything they hear on mainstream media, everything they were taught in school, everything they heard from their, their church pastor, everything they read in history books, they have, they have tunnel vision. But other people, critical, independent, free thinkers with open minds like George Carlin talked about, Frank Zappa, these people could see through all the bullshit with no problem. But it's not that we're our brains, or well maybe they are superior, but it's not like our brains are, are, are any different than the, than the Nakum poops. It's just that it's like they're in a spell. It's like, it's like those people in Kentucky who are scraping the bottom of the barrel and uh, uh, maybe their, their lives are not getting any better, but perhaps it's their, uh, their religious cult that has them spellbound. The whole bullshit about, you know, uh, 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 abortion and, uh, and, and gay marriage and this, that, and the other thing and all their other crazy ideas. They're, uh, um, they don't, they're not free thinkers at all because if they were, they would analyze the situation and they would research and get more information instead of just believing what their crazy pastor is telling them. Or what a Mitch McConnell was telling him, uh, or Rand Rand Paul. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we, you, you, you mentioned Rand Paul. I mean, the guy flip flops on everything, from drones yeah. to you know the Middle East. So yeah. I mean, I don't even think he's a truly libertarian guy. And he just calls himself that, so libertarians will vote for him. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, um, that's uh, just my two cents. Yeah, but uh, 
It's like that uh, the Great Twilight Zone episode with, with Burgess Meredith. Um, yeah. So you know what? Talk to the people about something that you have in front of you. I have to run to the bathroom. I gotta go no real. Problem. I gotta go real bad. I'll be right back. Sorry. No problem. No problem, man. We are live. I'm back. All right. Uh, did you uh, did you say anything or? I just brought Rosie up for a good look at the camera. That was it. Oh, well, we have <laughs> we have a lot of dead air. Oh uh, yeah, I was checking my my mail and my links and stuff. Oh, all right. I have to. I have I to, you're, yeah, you're edit it. Yeah. yeah, I'm gonna edit it. Yeah, I'm, well, on live stream, it won't be edited, but uh, if for for YouTube and Google and everything, it'll be edited. You know, um, no problem. Um, I had some very strong imported Japanese green tea with matcha powder, so maybe that matcha did a number on me. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but anyway. Um, we're talking about, um, I wanted to get into how people in the United States are just becoming so much more aware and educated because of the internet. And uh, I think this is the reason why uh, many parts of the country are saying no to Monsanto's uh, genetically modified uh, food and seeds uh, for, for, for farming and also uh, um, the minimum wage has been raised in certain parts of the country like Seattle, Washington, um, the legalization of marijuana. So, so th uh, the progressive movement is not uh, uh, weak and feeble. I think it's growing. I think it's uh, the flame is, is, is growing larger. You know, I think so. Um, uh, we have no interaction uh, at all from our wonderful group on Facebook. There, nobody has posted anything yet, which um, doesn't surprise me. Oh man, you know, you know. I mean, to me, if you're if you're a member. All right, it's your, it's your choice. If you want to be a spectator, a voyeur, that's your choice. But at least if you're going to be active, proactive, don't just do it on your own profile page. Do it on the group. Share it with a lot more people than the tiny amount you may have on your friends list. Yeah. Yeah, I have friends that are like that. They won't join my groups, but they'll, you know, they'll post every, you know, similar things ten ways till Sunday. And I tell them you'd have a great time in our group. But they would rather just do it on their own site. So it's like, eh, whatever, what are you gonna do? This is men and women both too. This isn't just like guys. It's, 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 it's almost like they they they're they're spineless cowards. Like they 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 want to hide in their own little clique. That's one thing I hate. One habit that I hate about uh, modern people today is is uh, clicks. If you have something important to say, share it with the nation, share it with the public. Don't don't just hide in your own little circle, your own little coven of uh, so-called friends and acquaintances and relatives. There's this really funny meme going around that says your vibe will bring you your tribe. You know, and I'm a firm believer in, in that, you know, Facebook has allowed me to do that. It's like, you know, uncensored, and holistic, and some of the other groups, nothing, yeah. some of the other groups. You build a nice community of people uh, who are kind of like a tribe. We're very tribal people. We have some more interests, some more senses of humor. Yeah. Some more things we'll put up with and won't put up with. Uh, well, we have like interests. We, we, right. we have we're, things we're, in common, our way of thinking. Yeah. We're brave enough to move out of our comfort zone. Right. Uh, our bubble yeah. to you know interact with people all over the city, state, country, world, you know. But um, but I know, and, yeah, and more of an impact that way. I think. Sorry, go ahead. 
but, but I know people uh, on the internet that, um, particularly on Facebook, that are uh, members of the group Uncensored Hard Hitting Truth, but, and they have a lot of powerful, intelligent things to say, and they are very progressive, and uh, I know of one or two of them that are outstanding and very proactive, but damn it, they post everything on their profile. They have so many great things to say and so much valuable information that they, the, the, I hate to say it, but the, the fucking boneheads, I don't understand. How could they be so intelligent and so uh, uh, dedicated progressive soldiers with such a limited audience? As their as their friends list, it's stupid. Are they afraid to go public with what they have to say? Hey, I know somebody who's on the same page as we are. Now he's starting to post more and more on the group. Uh, I know, actually I know two of them like that. One of them, he like don't don't just say important things to me privately share them on the group. There are other people who feel the same way. You know, uh, um, controversial subjects, put them on the group also. I got to salute my uh, friend. I used to work with him years ago, Mr. Uh, Ronald King. He's very controversial when it comes to, you know, male rights and uh, social, social uh, subjects, dating, relationships. He doesn't pull any punches, and he's not afraid to publicly voice his opinion. He puts them on a group. You know who I'm talking about. And, uh, you know, he, he doesn't just talk about things privately with me. He also posts them on the group. And i get got to give him a lot of credit for having a backbone of titanium for Ronald King to do that. And that's the kind of person I respect. That's the kind of member I respect. Don't just keep it on your profile and private inboxing people. You know, just put it on the group uh -huh. and share it. Uh, what we're doing now is the ultimate because most progressives online don't, don't have the guts, the intestinal uh -huh. fortitude to do what we're doing now yeah. or, or to do what I do every Saturday with Dr. Bill. Okay, most of them, you say the word, you know, be a guest, do a live video show with me, they get all nervous, they freak out, you know, or they blow you off, sure. you know, so grow a backbone, man, <laughs> no interaction, I don't see any questions on the uh, chat window, none, none whatsoever. Well, um, you yeah, know, you know, again, you know, with the, the whole money policy, you can you really can equate money and politics to everything now. It affects like a hydra every segment of what's going on. You know, people are afraid of the NSA copying everything we say. You know, everything we type, we text, we email, we talk about yeah. via, via the internet. So I, I, I give, I cut people a little bit of slack because I'm, I think sometimes they're super paranoid. You know. Well, when I'm upset about something, it's very difficult for me to bite my tongue. You know, I wear everything on my sleeve. Uh, if I like you, you know it. If I don't like you, I avoid you. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not a, you know, I'm not a um, two-faced, phony backstabber. I'm pretty much uh, honest about things. And uh, if I'm, if I have to struggle in life, or suffer in life because of a multi-billionaire Republican is fucking me over. There's no fucking way I'm going to keep that a secret. Yeah. Otherwise, they'll keep doing it to the next person. I I, I look at them as like serial offenders. You know, yeah. if you don't stop, if you don't stop yeah. a serial offender, they will keep offending. No, no. Yeah. I mean, I mean, just the sheer fact that I'm pissed. Yeah. I, I, that overrides my fear of going public. Knowing that this motherfucker, like Mitch McConnell, 
Oh, yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, and the Weeper, the house, uh, the the crying Tropicana orange juice, orange headed John Boner, Boner. orange Ohio one. Yeah. yeah, he's like he's like an orange with juice, orange juice coming out of his eyes. These guys are living high in a hog, stealing from the taxpayers. I'm sure any one of these guys can have rock lobster tail and filet mignon, you know, three meals a day if they wanted to, you know, and, 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 and go on elaborate vacation. They can go to, to Bora Bora or, or Tahiti or wherever. Anything they want, they get. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. These guys, knowing that they're living so high on the hog, on the taxpayer's dole, and guys like us have to struggle and live week to week. You know what I mean? And yeah. and struggle and suffer and not have the not have the uh, the surplus cash or the surplus time, leisure time, to enjoy anything. Can't we can't just decide, oh I'm so exhausted. You know, hey Sash, uh, let's uh let's you wanna go for a week away for all inclusive uh, vacation we can't do that they can right. knowing uh, this mm -hmm. just sends my blood pressure to the roof and there's no yeah. there's no way I am I will be reluctant to express my anger about it but these other mm -hmm. people there are people who are just not they just don't have that intestinal fortitude or machismo, whatever you want to call it, or even a fe female with a backbone. All right, I know somebody who's a tough, pretty tough girl. She's as tough as they come, her back, based on her background. But she won't go public because she worked, she re she's retired, and she's a, she was a career United States government employee. So, for whatever reason she has, she just posts all of her, all of her powerful progressive information on her, on her own profile. She won't do it on the group. She won't do a show. She claims she had, knows other people locally in her state that are on you know radio stations that she could do shows with. I says, uh, well, do you do them? She goes, yeah, I do them. You know, occasionally I do them. Uh, but as far as going public on video, you'd be surprised how many people blow me off after they they sound all gun ho about what they have to say, and you know, and they're so dedicated and, and 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 furious about how things are today. They just don't have the backbone to go on video or to publicly post things on the group. Now, granted. There are people who post a lot of great information on the group, but it's a small percentage of the whatever the hell we got over there, 2,500 2, members already, whatever it is, it's definitely over 2,000. It's still a small, yeah. tiny percentage that are proactive and in getting involved. Now, it, it surprises me, too, because we seem to be adding people all the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, now, getting back to politics in America, the uh, the only way Republicans can win anything is by cheating. And uh, 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 not only do they have the blowhorn, they own the blowhorn. They uh, they they get plenty of face time because of the corporate controlled media. They use tactics, dirty tactics like gerrymandering and and voter suppression. Uh, coming up with some fucked up idea about voter IDs and, and paying for your voter ID, which shuts out the poor and minorities, mm -hmm. and uh, things like that. They, 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 cheating is the only way, sabotage is the only way they can win, because they do not have any facts or a positive track record to back them up. So, and you can also argue, too, on the flip side of the coin, the only way positive populist change happens is by people growing a backbone, taking it to the streets, and making that change happen. 
Yeah, where are the rebuttals? Where are the protests for all these things that are going on? I don't see them. I don't see them at all. The, you, know, you saw how the Occupy movement whipped out. But they really didn't have any solid leadership. You know, we have to get over the apathy. We have to get over the feeling like we can't do anything to change it. Once you get over those two humps, I'm pretty sure we'll be ready. There'll be enough progressives woken up and galvanized yeah. and ready to take action to yeah. help us all. Well, look, just, uh, I'm very happy that the young people have really taken to Bernie Sanders. Yeah, he, he's, he's 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 gone over great with the young people, and and you know, and it doesn't surprise me they. Uh, they like what he represents, or love what he represents. They're uh, they're more willing to accept that the system we have is rigged, much more so than their parents or grandparents. Yeah, it's true. It's true. They're 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 more progressive than their parents or, or grandparents, and uh, other relatives, older generation relatives. They they know the system's rigged. They're willing to accept it. You have people like the Young Turks uh, uh, spreading the good word amongst the young Americans. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, then, of course, the attack on women by the right wing has uh, really ticked off a lot of women. So I think uh, um, a lot of women and young people will vote. In 20, <laughs> 20, God bless you. In 2016, well, now why... Now, hopefully, there will be some con Congress, there will, there will be some seats um, uh, that need to be voted on this 20, uh, 2016, con uh, senators and congressmen. Hopefully, we'll, we'll be able to gain back some senatorial or congressional seats. I don't know how many are up, Just so maybe. If, if any. I mean, damage has already been done this past November, but hopefully uh, the Democrats will be able to gain back more seats. Um, and, uh, you know, good luck, Bernie Sanders. That's all I got to say. Uh, things are going in the right direction. System's uh, corrupt. It needs to be changed. But, uh, hey, look at, look at the, the insanity of Republican controlled states. Look at the uh, Rick Scott in Florida. You you know, it's against the law to feed the homeless. Oh, Even man. if you're a pastor, you can't feed the homeless. They, they'll, they'll arrest you. You know, they tear down uh, tents. The homeless can't live in a tent in the woods. They evict yeah. you from the woods. He's, that guy's in the same conversation as Christie or Walker or Brownback, you know. Yeah. Uh, we, just even these guys that, that decided that they're just going to subjugate their own people. And like like they're freaking Nazis, you know, and as opposed to collaborating and help, help making everyone's lives better, not just the yeah. Well, it's despicable. Uh, United States veterans are living in a in a tent community in the woods in Florida. How nasty could that be? Uh, they have a tent community. The Republicans are not happy with that. They they, they evicted uh, a tent community up here in Lakewood, New Jersey, in the woods. They, they broke up that. I mean, to get evicted from the woods, <laughs> where are you going to go? Where are you going to go? You know, you yeah. can't be if you're homeless. All right. They blame you. They say you're a lazy bum. All right. You're homeless. You're a vagrant. They arrest you. Right. They put you in a privatized prison built by corporations. How convenient that is. Privatized right. prison. There's quotas in some of these red states where corporations are suing the states for not keeping the privatized prisons full. Right. That's the right. new out. That's the new outsourcing, Sash. It's cheaper than outsourcing. But it's not sustainable. I was just saw an article today about Alabama basically forcing themselves to start getting rid of the nonviolent offenders because they just don't have any room anymore. And a lot of the inmates who have been there over the last 20 years have said that things have gotten worse. There's less and less space for everybody, and every people are getting becoming coming in more peaceful and, and leaving more violent. Uh, so uh, I think that uh, these states that kind of bit off more than they can chew are gonna have to just, just to save money and to keep doing what they're doing. 
uh, start letting out the nonviolent offenders. So, uh, yeah. and we just gotta have some faith it'll happen. And we gotta just stay vigilant and yeah. keep reporting this to the public until you know. <laughs> I, you know, I'm convinced that by 2016, we'll galvanize the the the, the, the base enough. You know, we'll wake up a lot of the progressives to uh, start taking some more positive action in the, in the polls. Uh, midterms have traditionally been awful. This is just the worst we've had, and uh, hopefully, uh, the you know, 2016 will break that cycle, and we can you know move yeah. forward and not look back. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Ex- exactly. Um, yeah. I mean, in my opinion, marijuana and prostitution are not real crimes. They're frivolous. It's nonsense. It's a waste of prison space. It's like the uh, the right wing conservative zealots uh, uh, that started prohibition back in the day. You know where uh, uh, they they use alcohol consumption as a scapegoat for things. Um, it, it just it's, it's the same nonsense. It's a uh, right wing exactly. hypocrisy. If you ha- if I had to think of one word to best describe conservatives. And the right wing, it's hypocrisy, being a hypocrite. Yeah. And having no shame. No and remorse. And, have, no. and having no limit to the hypocrisy either. No depth, uh, they won't sink uh, to. They're, they're sociopaths. They have no remorse, no shame. It, the ultimate in selfishness. Because greed is a form of selfishness. Mm-hmm. The ultimate uh, one. Yeah. And we're at the point now where they would rather see this the whole world burned to a cinder than actually have fair play, you know, and share the wealth and not, uh, right. not create communism, but actually like save the world from its, from, you know, dying of climate change and, and, you know, and, and starvation and all these problems we shouldn't have, but we have them because of greed. <laughs> well, look, well, just look how ridiculous it is with, with these conservatives or these corporates. Okay. They get paid off. They're filthy rich. They never seem to have enough money because they're already multi-billionaires and they're still taking more bribes. It's plan. It's it's profits before planet and the people. Profits before the planet and the people. So what happens is, let Monsanto continue using its uh, Roundup and all its other pesticides. Kill off the bees. Now you have no uh, pollinators. Right. You have not very little pollinators. So now our food supply comes to an end. Okay, so now there's no food. Now naturally you can't eat money. So now between global warming and the pollinators being dead, now you're in really deep shit. Yeah, and okay. it goes, it goes, it's even worse than that. There, there are deep pockets of ammonia in those ice caps that are melting. And uh, if, you know, if all that ammonia goes up in our atmosphere, we could turn out to be like Venus in the next two hundred years. All the carbon dioxide yeah. that's that's in, in buried in the in the ocean floors, global warming is going to release all that. Like you say, the um, greenhouse gases uh, to the point where the Earth will become more and more of a dead planet. The rich will, they have their underground condominiums or underground villages or whatever the hell they have. They're buying up those abandoned Cold War missile silos. They got all these places underground. I hope their food supply lasts them a long time because eventually you have to come to the surface. Uh, You know, uh, uh, for the most, Part, they will only extend their existence um, yeah. above, beyond the average person. You know, they, they, yeah. so it's 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 a it, this is a no-win situation. Even for the very rich, eventually, Mother Nature will win, bite them right on the ass. Of course, they'll be filthy rich, but there will be no food. Um, you know, I mean, they could try underground hydroponics if they want but you know you, you need electricity to run things mm-hmm. uh, make sure you got to have enough purified air you need electricity to run that 
Uh, what if uh, a big solar flare comes and takes out the major grids? All right. right. Nuclear power plants. We got meltdowns, right? Now, one person, one teabagger that uh, was an educated teabagger says, "Oh no, the nuclear power plants. They in America, they, they're um, there's a mechanism. There's a mechanism that will prevent a meltdown in case the grid goes out." No. Not to worry, not to worry. I don't know how true this is. I don't know what to believe coming from any right wingers. Uh, you know, they're trying to say that we're being scared, that, that if for nothing, that Fukushima poisoning the Pacific Ocean is uh, created uh, propaganda from environmentalist uh, wackos like Rush Limbaugh calls them. Uh, that uh, we're just being scared for nothing, and uh, that's another thing that you don't hear about in the media: Fukushima dumping radi radioactive waste into the Pacific Ocean, uh, heading towards California. So, uh, so a lot of things kept secret by the U.S. Oh, yeah. by the U.S. media, and uh, you know, I think for the most worst case scenario, if uh, if the return of Christ, if that's meant to be, ever happens or not. Worst case scenario, the filthy rich will just live longer than us, but eventually they will come to their demise. Uh, so by being greedy, by putting profit first, what are you really accomplishing? What are you really gaining? I don't see. I don't see any, anything intelligent about it, or anything at all. You know. Uh, and uh, we can only hope this is the last gasp of desperate men, or if you want to take it to the, the extreme, desperate rich white men, you know, that, that have consolidated all the wealth, you know, and super conglomerates. Desperate uh, rich, old geezer white men who never seem to have enough. Who continuously attempt to uh, undermine anyone that has any kind of populist opinion that could help, you know, the general public at large. You know? Yeah. Uh, those, those not in those upper circles, uh, those who want things to change positively for us all, we get we get marginalized. You know? Yeah. And if you look at our our history, like it was a hundred years ago, popular struggle is the only way it's going to change. Yeah. That's true. And part, uh, you know, and it starts with the, with the voting. So let's hope we can get more people out there and vote. Get out and vote. Be vigilant. Please get out and vote at every major election, including uh, the governors of your states. Uh, the, uh, it can only help if we have more democratic uh, or, or in, uh, progressive independent governors. Um, <clears throat> and uh, let's push for uh, local organic farming and uh, let's give the tax breaks back to the middle class again where they should be. And as far as the uh, recent racism that's going on, because the, the, the racism and uh, the, the subject of um, gay marriage has seemed to have replaced police brutality in the media. Right. I notice. Okay. A lot uh, of things. <laughs> uh, I think the, t the fast track uh, uh, subject is much more crucial and, to, and then the uh, gay marriage subject. I mean, mm -hmm. It's my opinion. Uh, there's a lot of distractions with the mainstream media. They want to take our eyes off of the damage that's really being done. But uh, getting back to uh, the racist right wing in these states, at one time they used to be Democrat. They were called the Dixiecrats uh, during the Civil Rights Movement. Uh, after the civil rights movement, they switched parties. They became Republican, but before they were called the Dixiecrats, uh, like uh, uh, George Wallace of Alabama, I believe he was a uh, known. He was a very popular racist. Uh, was he a senator? Yeah, Senator George Wallace back then. And that's when all the that's when all the states start putting up the Confederate flags too. After the civil rights movement, there's a big F U, you yeah. know, to the federal government. You know, and all yeah. the people that fought and suffered in the civil rights movement. Well, these people are still fighting the Civil War. They're still pissed off that they lost. They're still racist. Uh, 
too lazy to get on the farms and plantations and do the work themselves. Um, the economy on the south of the south was built and created by the, the slave trade because the, 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 all those all them crackers that, that owned the plantations uh, they weren't out there growing anything you know like 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 let's say like the Amish of the north did yeah. uh, and then uh, of course the railroads they imported uh, Chinese immigrants and uh, they probably used slave labor also to build the railroads. Uh, oh, yeah. You know, uh, of course, they had derogatory terms for the Chinese immigrants. They called them coolies back then, and uh, you know, and uh, but uh, it's all exploitation. Uh, look at look at we're talking about infuriating exploitation. Yep. Haven't we done enough to Native Americans? That piece of shit, John McCain. And this other crony of his, with his funny name, I forgot, selling sacred, privately owned Apache land to a an Australian mining company. Yeah. Despicable. Haven't we done enough to these people? I'm sure McCain thought, oh, they have casinos, they'll be fine. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, the stupid, uh, uh, phony grimace on his face with that stupid puffy old fucking face he has you know and he had the nerve to tell that college kid to sit down and shut up and call him a low life he's the low life in reality well, remember, he, remember he said he would beat up harry reed and harry reed is a boxer you know harry reed said come on down <laughs> yeah remember that that show used to be on tv a celebrity Boxing, they used to fight with big gloves. Yeah, it's kind of, I remember yeah, that. Yeah, remember that? You know, they should. 90s, the glorious 90s. Could you imagine <laughs> if they brought that back with celebrities and politicians? But hey, speaking of celebrity, there's no more Celebrity Apprentice, or at least not with the Don anymore. Because yeah. Donald Trump is now banned from NBC. Donald Trump, you are hereby fired. You yes. fool you. <laughs> hey, you fired, man! You fired. You fired. I have a, a friend, a weightlifter, named Brian Slade. He's a, he sounds just like Mike Tyson. He's a white guy. Hey, let me tell you something, man. I go. Hey, it's all good. I take everything. I'm a walking. Uh, I'm a walking uh, a, a, a medicine cabinet. I'm a walking drugstore. Yeah, it makes me strong. That's exactly how he sounds. But uh, yeah, he uh, he got fired. Good for him, deservedly so. Uh, kind of, it's payback for all the times uh, he got off firing people on Celebrity Apprentice. I mean, Jim, kind of you're not old enough to know that like Trump really been putting up with his dumbass since the, at least the early '80s. I want to say '84, you know, at least since then. So this is just to, to me, this is many decades and you know coming. Yeah, it should well, have happened a long time ago. He's an egomaniac, born with a silver spoon in his mouth. If it wasn't for his father, who uh, got him started with the with the capital, the cash to buy, to make his first deal, and, and if it wasn't for his father to teach him how to make the deal, he would be nothing. Uh, 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 you know, same thing with WWE. People call Vince McMahon Jr. is a genius. Now, I grant it. Vince McMahon June Jr. did bring professional wrestling to uh, mainstream media, primetime TV. I do have to give him a lot of credit for that. He did do that. But if it wasn't for his father, Vince McMahon Sr., being in partners with Toots Mon and the, and the Capital Wrestling Company, and, and, and uh, he, of course, Vince Jr. was an announcer, okay, for many years. If it wasn't for his dad, he would be no better than any other independent circuit promoter. So what I'm saying right. is people are not people are not self-made geniuses like well, let's you here. Let's take Vince in the WWE for an example. You know? Um, 
the uh, they bought out WCW. Before that happened, there was competition. You had the ECW, the WCW. Uh, that's it was good competition for everybody. So they everyone doing, got they were doing great, Sash. Better uh, products. They were getting better, better TV, better entertainment. And then Vince bought it all. You know, about ten years ago, right? And what happened? You know, you could say the product wasn't even nearly as popular as it was back in the days when it had competition. You know, oh, and, the, and that's oh, yeah. that's the problem with monopoly. Is mm -hmm. it, it doesn't create, you know, a good product, and it doesn't benefit all, you know, as you know, everyone. It just benefits yeah. the diehard fans. Probably. And, that's about and, it. In the free enterprise system, competition makes for a better quality product better quality service and lower prices across the board. The more right. competition you have, the less competition you have, and the more monopolies you have, the things I just mentioned go in the other direction. They yep. go down. Now, uh, Time and again. Right. Like, back in the, like, well, of course, with wrestling, back in the day, you had the territories. Hey, if you, if you had a falling out with one promoter, and uh, you can always go to another territory, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? But uh, they went belly up eventually, didn't do so well, and you were left with uh, uh, WCW, uh, which I think came out of Jim Crockett's uh, Mid-Atlantic NWA promotion. Uh, WCW and ECW, which was Paul Heyman, their ratings were through the roof. I mean, college kids loved ECW, the old ECW Paul Heyman promotion. They, I watched it myself every week. I loved it. Then eventually, ECW, Extreme Championship Wrestling, went to a USA Network, and then lo and behold, they lost their spot. Mm -hmm. And then Vince was in there, took the spot. Right. And, and then uh, with WCW, it, it, you know, eventually it was sold to Ted Turner, and Ted Turner just didn't care about wrestling or whatever and sold it to Vince. Um, you know, and uh, but uh, they made mistakes, and they they plunged. But they were they were giving Vince McMahon a run for his money. And uh, would it be interesting in, in, if Ted Turner sold WCW to Donald Trump? <laughs> that, wouldn't that be? Wouldn't that have been fascinating? That uh, rivalry. But you're right. Well, yeah. Competition. Yeah, and then that just goes to show, you know, and and then, and then the products that Vince had after he assimilated ECW and WCW went right downhill right away, and all that great talent he assembled to compete with them, you know, started going their own way. Yeah. That's why The Rock is now. Yeah. You know, doing his thing as a major Hollywood movie star, you know? Right. He wasn't going to stick around and, and, and watch this bad product yeah. ruin his body and his career. He wasn't well, gonna... well the, the, the writers suck. Yeah. The writers today suck. Yeah. They do. And that's what happens when you have Monopoly. You don't, you don't have to have as, as good a product. Yeah. And uh, you see it all the time. You see it in the auto industry, uh, pharmaceutical industry. Uh, you know, they, and they leverage it to the hilt, and they use these politicians, you know, to do what they want. Now, 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 I hear TNA lost its TV ta uh, tape uh, slot. Really? Yeah, they're on. Um, they're streamed on the internet, I think, or uh, I don't understand it. I, I actually like TNA. I I watched it. I was very disappointed that I couldn't find it on cable anymore. I like the competition with the wrestling promotion. It's the same thing with all businesses. The more competition you have, the better the service, the better the product, the lower the price. And this is why I'm saying we have to get behind Main Street and the little guy and start making Wall Street pay its fair share in taxes and not give any breaks to those that are already rich. Right. Okay, and, and, and this is the backbone, Main Street. At one time, everything was on Main Street. The average American often didn't have to drive to do their shopping or go to the doctor or go to a lawyer's office or whatever. Everything was either walking distance or by bus, you know, at one time. Right. Uh, right. Uh, um, um, 
like, you know, let's just take any area. Let's take San Diego. I'm sure you guys have your main drags in the city of San Diego. Mm -hmm. You know, if it was old-fashioned America, you would just, like, walk or take public transportation and do everything. Yeah. You know? And, uh, we do have some trolleys here, which is nice. Yeah. Um, it isn't a great system, but it's it's it, it, it kind of works for San Diego, and um, yeah. it's nice to have a decent transportation system. It didn't start out that way. It wasn't great right away. It took time. Well, light rails. Uh, America. Yeah. That's another thing. America. You had light rails called trolleys. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, and uh, uh, it's less pollution, less traffic, um, less cost. You know, now, 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 less people have to buy a car and make those uh, horrendous car payments and uh, pay for uh, expensive car insurance. They just take the light rail, take the trolley, or take the um, well, a nice, clean, safe subway. <laughs> Not like the ones in New York City. Every time, last, especially the last few months, I keep hearing New Yorkers bash the subway. You know, like. Man, I'm, I'm sick of homeless people stinking up the subway car, and I gotta move to the next one. You know what? <laughs> you know what happened? Uh, uh, Doctor Bill explained to me what happened. To make a long story short, back in the 1980s, Ronald Reagan passed some kind of law where he did he he emptied out all the mental institutions because right. he he wanted to uh, shrink government and and uh, get these people off the dole. So his answer was to let them go on the streets. So all these uh, homeless people that are uh, might be crackheads or walking around talking to themselves or uh, pushing some, some poor soul onto the subway tracks, walking around going blah, 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 blah. Well, that's the result of them having no place to you know, first of all, if you're a psychiatric patient, you have no business being out in society mm -hmm. if you're that far gone. And Reagan did that, and that's why we have all these uh, these freakazoids <laughs> walking around. Right. right. Um, you know, and and I'm sure the you know there was a lobbying group for uh, making sure that didn't happen, but they don't have the kind of lobbying power that say a military contractor does. You know. But it's, um, so, you know, that, 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 that's where the politicians need to hold the priorities in their heart that we hold, you know, not just the ones that the, ones, the companies that pay the most. Now, isn't that funny how when you really analyze it, practically everything negative in today's modern society in America can be connected to a Republican. You take every problem that we have and, and backtrack and it's all connected to something a Republican did or didn't do. And follow the money. Follow the money. Yep. Like Jesse Ventura says. But anyway, is there any uh, based on the protocol that you showed me the other day, is there anything else you want to say, Sash? No, I think we covered it all. And um, was, I'll talk to you about putting those links up from um, yes. you know, the, like the, some, some of the videos I use to get, get some more information. And uh, I hope you guys... You know, so when we get more people to watch, I hope you guys uh, find it useful like I did. And I thought this was a good discussion, James. It was very, very invigorating. And I thank you for uh, joining me uh, on our second show uh, titled Fun. Enough is Enough. Oh, by the way, uh, how, how do the Young Turks feel about Bernie Sanders? Do they like him? Oh, they love Bernie. They've always loved Bernie. Um, you know, the, good. Good. You know, He's he's there's a few things he's occasionally been a little kind of on the fringe about, but I mean for the most part they, they like the fact that he he's either going to get Hillary to behave more like a progressive, um, assuming that she she gets all the big donor bucks. Well, she has or, to. She has to sound progressive. Yeah. Not that yeah. she really is, but yeah. You know. Or or he's just going to surprise the living hell out of all of us and get more money than anybody and yeah. and turn it all around. This you know, put it. Put us back where we should have been in 2000. Hillary yeah. and Bill were always corporatists. Bill Clinton, when he signed away Glass Steagall, and uh, he uh, he yeah. he kind of he tried to comp. 
Actually, he did compromise with um, uh, Newt Gingrich, I believe, back then. And he changed the welfare system to what we have now. He made it worse. Bill Clinton, yes, even though the tax rate on the rich was, I think, 39%, and he created a lot of jobs, and we had a surplus, and the economy was doing great. Uh, yes, he did make the welfare system as we know it crappy. Because yeah. why? Because he tried to do this uh, bipartisanship compromise with re the Republicans, with Newt Gingrich. Every yeah. time you have a bipartisanship compromise, the little guy always loses at the end. That's right. Always, that's right. always. And this is, uh, that's why it sickened me when Nancy Pelosi and even Barack Obama, bipartisanship, bipartisanship. People voted for change. They did not vote for bipartisanship compromising. Right. You know. Anyway, thank you for joining me. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Take care. This has been a Mega Life 21 production.